everyone, this is the Reformed Media Review. My name is Camden Busey and I thought I'd drop in for a, a very quick episode uh, on The Meaning of Tradition by Eve Congar. I just finished this about a week or two ago. Uh, I like to read quite a bit on, in Catholic theology and, and to stay sharp on this. And of course, one of the big differences between Protestants and Catholics uh, is the view of uh, Scripture and how it relates to tradition. Uh, the Catholics believe uh, that we basically uh, stand upon both equally, uh, but uh, Protestants uh, subscribe to sola scriptura, scripture alone. And uh, of course, we have a doctrine of, of uh, tradition and an understanding of how the truth is passed down from generation to generation. So we do stand on the foundation of the prophets and apostles. Uh, yet at the same time, uh, scripture alone is the infallible rule, the norm that norms all other norms. Uh, but this book is superb. I greatly enjoyed reading it. Yves Congar was a very significant theologian. He was a Dominican friar and was largely significant upon Vatican II and uh, had a great deal to say there. This book, um, I don't know if this is merely the reprint, but this book was published in 1964. So that gives you uh, an understanding of the era in which it was published. Vatican II was, occurred between 1962 and in 1965, but I appreciated this book mostly because it challenged me. Uh, it led me to think more deeply about tradition and the uh, commonality we might have uh, with Roman Catholics, but also the divergence in, in doctrine and uh, some very deep convictions. Um, yet at the same time, Congar deals with the Protestant Reformation. He speaks about the Reformers a significant amount. And uh, he seeks to develop and understand the doctrines and then explain why the Roman Catholic position, in his view, is, is superior. Um, and so I didn't agree, of course, with the conclusions of this title. Yet at the same time, I greatly appreciated it because it's well written. It is clear. It is um, coherent. Uh, but it didn't con uh, convict or compel me so much uh, as it did to challenge me and get me to think. I wanted to read two brief segments uh, out of this book that I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, they certainly put a smile on my face. The first is on page 126. It is worth noting, but should not surprise those who have followed me thus far, that the realities held by the Catholic and rejected by the Protestant as not proven by Scripture, such inner realities as those founded on a sense of God's presence, activity, and exactingness in the creature he sanctifies, the Marian mystery, the religious life, monachism, the dignity of consecrated virginity, the Eucharistic presence, are realities that concern the religious relationship in its inmost truth. They are in no way secondary, but intimate and almost secret. Their biblical foundations are very solid, but are revealed only in tradition. And this is a very clear acknowledgement that many of the doctrines that Protestants find to be very peculiar to Roman Catholicism and doctrines that we challenge as not being present in Scripture, Congar acknowledges, well, of course, they're not in Scripture. He says the foundations and the biblical principles are there, but these truths, uh, these peculiar doctrines, the ones that are, are distinct for the Catholic Church, have been revealed not in Scripture, but later in tradition. And so to move a few pages later on page 138, nothing is more educative for man in his total uh, in his totality than the liturgy. The Bible is certainly a marvelous teacher of prayer and of the sense of God and of the adult convictions of conscience. Used alone, the Bible might produce a Christian of the Puritan tradition, an individualist and even a visionary. So I got to say that I, I in, agree with the conclusion of Congar there, uh, who says that if you did not uh, subscribe to the Catholic doctrine of tradition and held to something akin to sola scriptura or scripture alone and only held to the doctrines that it revealed and that it taught, he says you'd end up being something of the Puritan tradition, which, of course, is what we are, those of us who subscribe, of course, to the Westminster standards. Um, and we trust that if you do hold to sola scriptura, and that's what we believe the Bible itself teaches, then uh, we would hope that you would come to Puritan convictions, that you would certainly eventually make your way into the Reformed uh, confessional community. So I, I smiled when I, when I read those things, and I found that we can both agree on some of the major issues, at least what the matter is, 
And uh, we can even agree on the assessment of the matter in terms of what the issues are and where they lead, though we can still disagree on uh, how we go about uh, these, these issues and uh, what our conclusions ought to be. So in my mind, that is a sign of a good book, a very stellar book, well-written, a classic. And so if you are interested in understanding more of uh, the Roman Catholic notion of tradition, you must read this. Fairly fast read. It's only 169 pages, not including the short bibliography. Yet at the same time, it is um, clear, it is concise, and it is challenging. So it's The Meaning of Tradition by Eve Congar that's spelled Y-V-E-S. Congar is C-O-N-G-A-R. It's published by Ignatius Press, and uh, I encourage you to read it. Uh, you can visit us online for more information about books and uh, upcoming titles and uh, other reviews at reformedforum.org. I want to thank you so much for listening. Take up and read. <laughs>